Chapter 67 The Sunrise By dawn, the bonfire had dwindled to a smoldering hill of ash. Everyone else had gone home, and only Roz and Brightbill remained in the meadow. They lay in the grass together, watching as the soft light of morning crept up from the horizon. And then Roz said, Let us go for a walk. The robot and the goose hiked and flew up to their favorite spot on the grassy ridge. But then they kept going. They followed the ridge to the mountain, and they climbed all the way to the craggy peak, just in time to see the sunrise. I climbed up here once before, said Roz as the sun's rays warmed her body. I sat on this very rock and looked out at the island, and I thought I would always be alone. But I was wrong. Are you happy, Ma? The robot thought for a moment. I am. I'm happy, too. Bright Bill closed his eyes and felt the wind and sun. There was a slight cheer, chill in the air that made him feel alive. Everything seemed just right. And then he heard a distant buzzing sound. The goose squinted to the south and saw a familiar shape in the sky. He turned to his mother and said, Ma, there's an airship flying this way. Chapter 68 The Ricos The airship approached from the south, like some giant migratory bird. The ship was a sleek white triangle with a single dark window facing forward. Three identical robots stared out the window. The robots resembled Roz, but they were bigger and bulkier and shinier. The word Rico was lightly etched into each of their torsos, followed by their individual unit number. They were Rico 1, Rico 2, and Rico 3. The Ricos flew in a low circle around the island. They saw a smoking hill of ash. They saw mysterious wooden domes. They saw four dead robots scattered across the shore. The airship hovered above the robot gravesite for a moment. Then it floated up over the island and lowered itself onto a small meadow at the foot of the mountain. The engines blasted air toward the ground, bending the trees and tearing the grass. Then the landing gear sank into the soil. The engines powered down, and all was quiet. A door hummed open, and out stepped the Ricos. They took several long strides into the meadow and stopped. A shadowy figure was lurking at the edge of the forest. The Ricos turned and faced it. They stood flushed together like a sparkling wall. And then the shadowy figure began to move. Out from the trees walked some sort of two-legged creature. It was dusty and dirty. Butterflies flitted around the flowers that sprouted from its body. One of its feet was made of wood. And then the creature spoke. Hello, my name is Roz. Chapter 69. The Defective Robot. Hello, Rosam Unit 7134. We are the Ricos. We are here to retrieve all Rosam units. The cold, flat voice came from Rico 1. He and his partner stood absolutely still and kept their glowing eyes locked on their target. There are four others, said Roz, but they are dead. We have already located the remains of the other units, said Rico 1. We will collect them later. Now come with us. The three Ricos motioned Roz to the airship, but she didn't move. Where have you come from, she said. The Ricos turned and stared at Roz. Do not ask questions, said Rico 1. Where will you take me? Do not ask questions. Why must I leave? Do not ask questions. I will not go anywhere until I get some answers. There was a brief silence as Rico 1 computed his next move, and then he began to speak. One year ago, a cargo ship carrying 500 Rosam units was sunk by a hurricane. 495 units have been retrieved from the ocean floor. We have come here in search of the last five, and we have located them. 
Razam Unit 7134, you are the property of Tech Lab Industries. We will return you to the factory where the makers will refurbish you and sell you to a worksite. You will then live on that worksite indefinitely. Now come with us. But I live here, said Raz. That is incorrect. Razam Unit 7134, any further resistance will be proof of defectiveness, and we will deactivate you. But Roz had more questions. Who are the makers? What is my purpose? Why can I not ask questions? This unit is defective, said Rico one to his partners. Commence deactivation. In perfect unison, the Ricos stepped toward Roz. They raised their blocky hands, ready to restrain their target, ready to shut her down with a press of a button. But a loud squawk and a streak of feathers cut them off. Stay away from my mama! Bright Bill swooped into the meadow and started hopping around, ready to defend his mother. The Ricos stopped and looked down at the goose. Of course, they didn't understand his words. They heard only meaningless squawks. But then they heard their target squawking back at him. Bright Bill, get out of here, said Roz in the language of the animals. These robots are dangerous. What do they want? They want to take me away. The Ricos stared at their target, trying to understand why she was exchanging noises with a goose. And then new noises began rising up. Rustlings and shrieks echoed from the forest. Animals were gathering. Their wild voices called out to one another. Roz needs our help! Those robots want to take her away! We have to do something! The uproar in the forest grew louder and louder. The Ricos peered past Roz towards the mysterious noises, but saw only foliage. Suddenly, shadows swept across the meadow, and Brightbill's flock dove onto the Ricos. The geese furiously flapped and pecked and wrapped their wings around the robot faces, clinging to the Ricos like feathery masks, distracting them, blinding them. Brightbill turned to his mother. Run! Run!